So let's talk about one of the main things about the Infinite Unify I love, and this is the Advanced Gradient Map Editor. So let's just create a gradient map for this image, and let's see what we're coming up with. And as you can see, there is some discoloration going on, but it's a little bit tough to tell. So we've got the advanced gradient map editor that will give you even more control over your gradient map. And you can access it by just doing a right click on one of these colors, or you can just switch this one on and then it will automatically open the gradient editor as soon as you hit create. So I'm doing a right click here and as you can see this is the gradient map editor. We've got these colors here in the middle and it's the same colors that we have here. So this is the analyzed colors with its hue, saturation and brightness and uh, number values. So you can really see which ones are completely off. In order to make this even more visible, we have this charts here for U and for saturation. And there you can see that based on the average here, these three colors are pretty much off. So let's just click them and get rid of these three colors. So the last one is always a little bit of a problem. So you can all click it and then click it. So these two, so. And now this one is evened out quite a bit. Maybe this one, we can even this one out. And this one also, just based on the U. This one goes into a strange direction in saturation. And yeah, let's just create these two again. And yeah. So now the green map looks a lot better than before. So. If I close this window again, switch this off, on and off, you see that I actually get a pretty nice skin tone here. It's maybe a little bit greenish, but we can fix this. So right click again. So let's see what else can we do. We have saturation for the shadows, the midtones and the highlights. It means if we want to, we can just this color, this desaturate the highlights a little bit, which gives this kind of cool look for fashion. If we want to, we can go back with the saturation in the shadows a little bit. As you can see, the these maps here are always updated in real time, so you can really work on this and maybe change colors here. So until you're happy with your gradient. So the saturation for shadows, midtones and highlights is pretty unique because Photoshop doesn't have that kind of feature to actually do saturation changes based on luminosity. Then we have the smoothness. I will show this on a different image because it's uh, easier to understand in the, on the other image. So I'll go back to this in a, in a second. And then we've got the U, so you can change the U more towards the red or towards the green. As you can see, this is also linked to the plug-in window. So you can change the U a little bit. And then we've got these five colors here, and these five colors are basically a representation on what these colors here are on the gradient map itself. So going back into the editor and then I see these colors and I can change them on the luminosity. That means if I change this, you can see how the highlights are more and more toned. And this all goes through the algorithm that we have to change colors and saturation based on their lum luminosity. So if I change this to the right, you can see how it's how the colors, the saturation, the U, everything is changed. And so if I let go, I get this look that goes more into that direction. Maybe I need to desaturate the shadows even more. 
saturate the highlights a little bit and then I've got so something like that which is also pretty cool can maybe even change these colors here so this is actually is pretty cool because you can change the skin tone with such a precision and in in detail this is really really crazy so let's talk about the smoothness and for the smoothness i've got this image as you can see i've got a crazy gradient here because i've got these blues in the shadows and the oranges in the highlights so let's go into the gradient map editor and let's see what we have here in colors so we have these blue tones we have these orange tones here and now if i turn up the smoothness that gradient will be smoothed out based on some average colors from the darks and some average colors from the brights and so you can see how that gradient becomes just a really really smooth transition from the left to the right so the smoothness is really powerful if you have something that has these cuts then you can smooth it out also the luminosity values obviously getting smoothed out so you always get a representation on what you get here in the editor and if you turn on the preview here and open the, the editor you can even see the effect of that slider so now we've got this harsh transition from dark blues to the oranges and if i turn this up everything will be smoothed out obviously i'm i will lose some of these strong orange tones but well it's all about finding the right balance between them talking about the balance you can obviously just move the luminosity a bit so you're moving the the whole gradient so you get more orange or if i move it to the right i get more blue so you can also do this cool split tone things maybe even bring up the shadows here a little bit bring it down in the highlights so got this uh, cool look here yeah so you can actually also use Infinite Unify to create some kind of color grade, uh, gradings if you want to or just paint it in where needed. So this is the this is the editor and this is really cool so I will switch back to this image and uh, turn on the auto open gradient editor so you can see this as well. So if I hit create then it will automatically after it's done with the algorithm it will just open that editor and I can really jump in say okay this is the colors that I want to change based on what I see here in the in the charts and now let's get rid of it maybe these three don't want them maybe this one this one yeah okay so now I've got my gradient here and yeah it's looking pretty good i have a saturation global saturation here on the slider so i can change the saturation a bit until i'm happy with the skin tone and i i think i'm pretty happy so let's just make the mask black zoom in a little bit and then with a brush i can just brush in these settings here get rid of these reddish ears really fast maybe turn even turn up the flow a bit uh, so you can see the effect where the skin is a little bit discolored you can just paint over it here's something that is a little bit grayish so it's very 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 straightforward and it does a wonderful job here in fixing this maybe the area here is a little bit missing a little bit of color and a little bit too red so i can just fix it i can even uh, get rid of the makeup if the position is not so good or i can bring it down a little bit if it's too much 
So it's really powerful and it's very convenient to work with Infinite Unify and with the um, Gradient Map Editor. You may have noticed these switches dark, medium and bright here. I want to tell you about these features and what it does. So it's good to understand what the algorithm actually does to use that. So usually colors are filtered by Infinite Unify before it goes into the um, algorithm that analyzes the colors. So what we're filtering out is super dark colors, super bright colors, colors that are very highly saturated or colors that don't have saturation at all. And that means if I want to create a gradient for this image here, and this is a very, very dark image, let's just create a normal gradient here. If you can see, uh, as you can see, it does a good job here, but a lot of stuff is filtered out. So now let's switch this off and create a new one. But now switch to dark. So what's happening here if I switch to dark? That means there is more stuff is filtered out from the bright tones, the desaturated tones, but it takes more of the saturated and darker tones. So if I create that one, you can see we have richer tones, we have richer black here. And if I switch between these, you can see the difference in the gradient map here on top. So we've got a little bit more, well, a little bit more going on here for, especially if I look into that area here, it will create a, a really, will create a nice transition here and the normal the normal one does that transition as well but it's just not as good so if you have a really dark image like this one just switch to dark and you will get a better result so now let's see this one here so make this a little bit brighter and same example just selecting highlights, midtones, and shadows. And I even get an information here that I need to modify my selection. It still does uh, create a gradient, but it does not have a lot of information because the actual information that I need is filtered out. So as you can see, it also creates a little bit of a tint here. That's not very nice. So if I switch to bright, create the same uh, selection, I don't get an, an issue and if you, as you can see the gradient is much nicer, it has much more information in the bright tones here and I can really work with that and even out the skin tones in the, um, in the bright image. So Basically, these ones, dark, medium, and bright. Medium is overall a good setting, so I would always try medium first. But it's some pictures need different filters. And here's another thing. You can click on these settings, for example, bright, and do a right click on it. And you can set these filters for yourself. So if the saturation is below 5%, then it will be filtered out and also if the saturation is above 60% it will be filtered out. Lightness below 50 will be filtered out and here lightness above 95 will be filtered out. It's still not 100 because we want to filter out the whites but 95 and 5% 5 saturation is a good value actually. And the same goes for dark we have saturation below 40% filtered out, but if saturation is above 95, so it goes really into these super saturated colors, 
Um, everything will be there, but only the super saturated colors will be filtered out. And the lightness below 5% and above 60% is filtered out. So you can set these filters. You can even set the filter for the medium uh, selection or for the medium algorithm. You can set this all for liking. So if you want to play around with the filters, just do right click on it and then you can set your own values. So for this example, I've already created a Infinite Unify layer and I've also set the opacity 60%, created a mask and I've applied a blend if to this. So the highlights are actually blend through. And well, in that setting, it's really hard to tell if the, if the gradient is good or not and if I need to take away some of these colors. And for exactly that reason, we have the preview eye here and that last icon in that bottom row. And if I click it, it will set the layer to 100%, remove the mask, and it will also remove the blend if temporarily. So now I can really tell that something strange is going on here in the shoulder. There are some pink tones that I really want to get rid of. I think it's these three tones I want to get rid, maybe even this one. So I just select this with the um, Alt key. Hold down the Alt key, click the ones that you want to remove and then click one of them. And now it's removed. Maybe I even get rid of these two here. And now I've got a really kind of a nice gradient. Yeah, bending is gone. So if I switch back on my eye, the mask is again there. Uh, opacity is 60%. And the blend if is also applied again. And now I can just use a small brush and paint in some of that effect because I want to get rid of some of that extra saturation and I want to create a nice tone here on the shoulder so like this and maybe also the arm need to fix this so now as I switch it on and off you can see that I've created some highlights and did a good job in that in that image getting rid of that extra saturation can even use it here on the leg a little bit just a tiny bit to fix these issues and so the um, the preview button is actually super nice if you want to see what's what would happen if the gradient map is applied with 100 percent and yeah, it's a it's a really very helpful features because otherwise you would need to change your opacity and remember these values and deactivate, disable the layer mask and then go into the blend if and set the blend if to zero and also remember the values. So this is quite a hassle actually. So it's better to just click the preview icon so you can really see what's going on with that layer. You can also switch it on, the preview, and then switch on and off the whole layer so you can see if it will fix the issues that you found in your image.